Good morning from Malaysia. Good morning from Penang. So the, the topic today is about uh, bite-sized learning, or the, some people call it micro-learning. Uh, Zaid call it learning nuggets. Um, but basically, it is about how we can deliver more for less. And once again, um, I will introduce myself. My name is Abdul Karim Alias. I'm actually a professor of food technology uh, and currently a director of Center for Academic Excellence in USM, or in short, CDAE. And that's my email and my website. So let's start. This is the um, agenda for, for this morning's uh, presentation on Periscope. So uh, I will start by looking at learning in the distracted world because we are living you know, in the world of where technology now becomes second nature to us. But sometimes, um, if it is not uh, managed, it can become a distraction and we can get distracted. So how do we deal with our students, this generation that always, you know, constantly be distracted? And how do we get them to be motivated to learn? And, you know, but uh, rather than, you know, uh, we complain about this, the, the distraction, how do we turn distraction into something positive? Um, in the in the in the learning process, and the second part, I will be talking about the what, the why, and the how of uh, so-called bite-sized learning or micro-learning. So that's the, basically the agenda that I'm going to cover in this presentation. Well, I'll start. I would like to start with these pictures. Well, basically, what you are looking, what you are seeing, what you are seeing on the slide uh, on the screen here. Yes, the old radios. Uh, thank you, uh, Zaid. So it's a vintage or vintage, whatever you know, radio. Uh, perhaps if you come from the baby boomers generation, maybe you have used one of these. I remember during my childhood, uh, no TV, no electricity, but I have a radio. The brand is Philip, and that was my, you know, close friend. Uh, that's how I get, you know, listen to news, uh, entertainment, songs, and I'm sure everyone remember this, the typewriter, and this is how we perhaps, you know, uh, prepare the documents in the old days. And this is actually how information in those days are being, you know, were being uh, generated. And of course, you can see the brand name there, but it's no longer around, I think. Kodak or Kodak, whatever. Used to be a big name, and this is a Pol Polaroid um, camera, and this is where uh, what we use to produce, you know, a static image, the photograph, the, to capture uh, the memory. So those, again, were the days. And all this image, text, documents, actually a type of information, but in those days, actually available only in printed form. But of course, as the, you know, the time uh, went by, the technology developed, so you know we have all these documents turned into different form like microfiche. And now I want to bring you to this time in the world of technology in the 21st century. So uh, maybe uh, we we just look at uh, first the global digital statistic to get some idea or to put things into perspective. Well, now we have 7.4 billion population. And this is the statistic as of August 2015, very recent. So we have a total population of the world about now stand at 7.4 billion. And the urbanization is what, 53%. And in terms of internet, active internet users, it stands around 3.2 billion now, which translates into penetration about 43%. And um, in terms of the active social media users, we are talking here about you know, uh, social media like Facebook, like Twitter, YouTube, all these actually are social media. And we have about 2.21 billion, which translate into about 30% penetration. What about the ownership of mobile devices? We have unique mobile users now stand around 3.7 billion. About 50% of the population of the world population now is uh, have access to, uh, you know, mobile phone, and we assume also to internet connectivity, and the active mobile social users, those who are using their mobile uh, and social media application, is about 
close to 2 billion, about 26%. So why I'm giving all these um, statistics? Because I just want to put into perspective uh, in, in terms of the, 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 the technology that we have now in relation, in relation to the number of um, population we have. And now with the state of the art technology that we have now and is still uh, you know, developing every day we have new technology, uh, information are being generated at unprecedented pace. There is a huge amount of inf information now being generated every minute. So this picture uh, captures uh, very nicely. If I just pick, for example, uh, Facebook here, in 60 seconds, in one minute, can you imagine that there are 41,000 posts posted on the Facebook wall every second? And there is 1.8 million likes every second, and that translates into the amount of data, about 350 gig of data every minute. Let's look at Google. Every minute, there are 2 million searches now happening around the world. And um, if we look at, for example, uh, where is YouTube? Here, YouTube. 72 hours worth of video are being uploaded in the last minute, in one minute. So this is what uh, I'm trying to actually illustrate here. The, the amount of information that is you know, being generated every minute now. How do we deal with this huge amount of information? And if we, as you know, someone who are highly educated, someone with PhD maybe, if we feel overwhelmed with this amount of information being generated, what about our students who are still you know, learning the rope? They are still acquiring the skill of looking, searching, filtering the information, and try to try to synthesize the information and making sense of the information. Now, if you go to a website, uh, you just uh, Google Internet in real time. Uh, so this is actually a screen capture. But if you go to the website, this Internet in real time, you can see all these numbers changing in real time. So you can see here, for example, in on Twitter's, how many uh, we have about six thousand uh, over new account being created and uh, what is this, uh, what, 3 million tweets per minute and YouTube. All these numbers are really mind-boggling. You can see down here, by the way, in 602 seconds you have been on this page, approximately this amount of gigabyte of data, terabyte, you know, tera terabyte of data was transferred over the internet. So now, uh, let me throw you these questions, and I hope you can uh, uh, respond. What was the last thing you studied, and how well do you remember it now? The point I'm trying to raise or highlight from the, from the question just now was the fact that um, attention spans are dropping at the same time. At the same time, technology and information is advancing at exponential rate. So that's the, 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 the key thing that I'm, I, I want to draw or I want to highlight from, from this, uh, you know, the, the last few slides. We are dealing with the generations now uh, where the attention spans now are very short. And we are now exposed to social media. And some people say social media are weapons of mass distraction. I think we can actually reflect on you know, what we are seeing now around us. People are always uh, on their mobile devices, even when you know, they are walking, they are driving, even, even when they are eating, they are always on social media. Uh, how do we actually uh, now turn this social media into something positive, into something that we can use and leverage in learning? So this is actually from, uh, this slide actually, uh, the, the material I take from Grovo, which is one of the provider for micro learning uh, material. So they said that we are moving from a culture of deep attention to hyper attention. Deep attention here simply means, you know, ability to concentrate on one object or information stream for long periods of time, ignoring outside stimulation. Whereas hyper attention, on the other hand, switches focus between multiple information streams, a preference for high stimulation and lower tolerance for boredom. So now this actually describes 
the younger generation, you know, the X, Y, uh, Z, Z generation, um, that they are actually of this type. They have, you know, they need high stimulation. They can get bored very easily. They have lower tolerance for boredom. So how do we now motivate this kind of generation so that we can engage them in learning? So fact to ponder. 